Hi, my name is Karen and I'm the Education Manager at the Clay Studio. Today, we're going to be making a planter that has a bee on it for Earth Day. The things we'll need to get started to make this planter are a fork, a sponge, paper and scissors to make the template cutouts, a rib tool or some kind of credit card or gift card for a smooth edge, and a lid to use as a circle template, a paper clip, and a rolling pin if you have one. Then wedge your clay. You can use porcelain, which is what I'm using, or any other kind of clay uh, for the kiln, or if you don't have that, air dry clay or Play-Doh will work as well. Play-Doh just won't be able to actually hold water at the end of the video. I just pound out this porcelain into a slab. You can use, do that using a rolling pin or by hand. I think a rolling pin is easiest, but if you don't have access to a rolling pin, throwing it out by hand will work as well. I just roll out a pretty thin slab. You don't want it to be more than a quarter of an inch thick to make the walls and bottom of the planter. It takes a few minutes to roll it out um, and just keep measuring the thickness as you roll. Next we're going to use a paper clip to use as a pin tool to cut the shapes out. I just unfold the paper clip to have a sharp edge and uh, leave the rest of the paper clip folded. Then I'm going to use a lid, this is from a gelato container, to use as the circle template for the bottom. If you'd rather make a smaller planter, you can use a smaller circle template. Now that I have the circle traced for the bottom, I'm going to sketch out the rectangle that will become the side walls of the planter. It's important to get the walls pretty straight, so if I see that my lines aren't straight enough, I just do them again. Next, I use the paper clip to actually cut into the clay following the lines that I made. And then just get rid of the scrap, put it off to the side, um, and you have your bottom circle and the rectangle that will become the walls. Grab some water and your sponge and we'll wipe down all of the edges with the damp sponge. This is to clean up the those loose bits on the edges but also to help help start slipping and scoring which will act like a glue and be able to stick the bottom of the planter to the sides. I use a fork for my scoring um, but you could use any other tool that is sharp and will make a, a line. The paper clip would work for scoring as well but will obviously take longer than a fork. Make sure you really slip and score all of the edges that are going to be joined together to make sure that they have that glue that will be able to stick. I add additional water just to create more of that slip that will then help it stick together. Then I put the bottom and the side slabs together and really compress them to each other so that they are firmly stuck together. Um, as you can see, I have made the rectangle slab extra long. Um, that's just to make sure I have enough because I can always cut off this extra. If the slab is too small, then you'll have to roll out another piece. You could also use paper templates to make sure you have just enough and not roll out more of the clay than you need. Then I'm going to slip and score these edges together, making sure to add lots of water with my damp sponge and use my fork to score all of these edges. Score both sides and then squeeze the clay together. It takes a little bit of time to really blend this clay together along the seam, but make sure that you're doing this well so that it won't leak in the future, especially if your planter is going to be used inside. You want to make sure that it can hold water and doesn't have any gaps. 
I'm going to spend a little bit more time here cleaning up all of these seams to be sure that it's watertight, both on the bottom and on the side wall where I just slipped and scored it together. I like using a red rib tool, or you could use uh, a gift card or something else that has a, a, a little bit of a flex to it, but a, a pretty much a flat edge. Um, you can also just use your sponge if that's what you have available. Um, it might take a little bit longer to clean up all of the edges. Now you can see I slipped and scored a little better here. The next step is to roll out another slab for your B. I used a paper template cut from construction paper to make my B shape. I folded the construction paper in half so that my B would be symmetrical. Place the template to one side of the slab and get the wing template to use on the other side of that same slab. The wing will eventually overlap the B, but for now we need to cut out two of them to make each wing. Make sure you have enough room on your slab to cut out both wings. I moved this wing over to the side to be able to do that. Then just use your pin tool or paper clip to cut out the wing tw two times and the B. Again, leave the scrap off to the side. You might be able to use it later. The next step is to make the eyeballs for the bee. Uh, insects usually have bigger eyes, so I'm going to sort of make a cartoonized version of a bee with great big eyes so that it can see the plant that's in the planter. Then slip and score the wings onto the bee slab and slip and score the eyeballs on as well. Compress everything and clean it up with a damp sponge so that the bee looks nice. Grab another slab of clay to make the top of the planter. Um, I rolled this slab out, but if you wanted to do it by hand, you could do that as well. Um, as you can see, my slab is sticking a little bit. Uh, if you want to avoid that, you could put a piece of fabric or parchment paper in between the rolling pin and the slab. Then I cut a, th a thicker slab to use for the top of my planter. You can see I slipped and scored it on um, and we're now ready to attach the bee. Again, we're gonna need to slip and score the bee onto the planter. The orientation of the bee is your choice. If you want the bee to be looking up into the flower pot, you could do that, or it could be flying along the side. Either way, we need to slip and score it together using the fork like before. So I'm gonna add some water via the sponge to the back and then score the whole back of the bee, um, including the wings because the wings will eventually touch the sides of the planter as well. Then using your fork again, score the planter everywhere that you think the bee will touch. Add some water with your damp sponge and you can score a little bit more if you need to to really make those scoring marks. Then secure the bee onto the pot by compressing in whichever orientation you prefer. Make sure to compress both the wings, body, and the head of the bee so that the bee is securely stuck to the planter. Now is the time for some additional cleanup with your sponge. I've let the planter dry out a bit and I'm ready for underglaze. I have the underglaze colors I would like here, yellow, black, and white, and some paintbrushes. If you need to leave the planter to dry for an extended period of time, I recommend wrapping it in plastic so it doesn't dry out too much. The goal is to have the clay be what we call leather hard so that I can put the underglaze decoration on and not mess up the shape. I use my paintbrushes to apply the different underglaze colors, yellow for the bee's body, white for the wings, and black for the eyes and stripes. If you aren't using a clay that's gonna go into the kiln, I would recommend using acrylic paint or a watercolor paint uh, for Play-Doh or other kinds of air dry clay. I finish by painting the black stripes and doing another coat of black on the bee's eyes. Here's the finished piece. 
I've painted black dotted lines all around the back of the piece to show movement, like the bee could be flying around the whole pot. Once the piece is fired, you'll be able to put a plant inside the pot. Thanks for watching.